Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial and we'll discuss about emotions in this chapter. So have you ever wondered what exactly are emotions? Well, I never did until I had a chapter in my syllabus about emotions. It soon caught my interest and one of the interesting facts that I learned was that it's not our heart that controls our emotions but it's our brain. So in case if you're making any wrong emotional decisions, you don't have a stupid heart but you do have a stupid brain. Well, there were some 92 definitions listed in on review and no doubt more could be found. I just wish genuinely they are not. They shouldn't be found. Anyway, definition of emotion should say something about the way we feel when we are emotional. It should mention the physiological or bodily basis of emotional feelings. It should include the effects of emotion on perception, thinking and behavior. It should point out the driving or motivational properties of certain emotions such as fear and anger. It should refer to the ways in which emotions are expressed in language, facial expressions and gestures. It's funny how out of 92 definitions about emotions that are found, none is generally accepted. In a way, the aspects of emotions that were listed before are a definition. But still I don't think we are supposed to write this way in our exam, so here are two definitions that my teacher gave me. Number one, emotions are reactions consisting of subjective cognitive states, physiological reactions, and expressive behavior. When you say subjective cognitive states, it's about how you feel, think, and understand about a thing from person to person. And physiological reactions are nothing but changes in our body, such as heartbeats, increase in heartbeats, or difference in breathing rate. And expressive behavior is the behavior that occurs based on your emotions. And the second definition is, emotions are feelings that generally have both physiological and cognitive elements that influences behavior. So these were the two definitions. Now let's look at the three functions of emotions. Number one, it prepares us for actions. For example, every time a dog is heading towards me, it literally freaks me out and I usually run away real fast. Well, the point is, I was scared and afraid and it prepared me for the action that is running away. Shaping our future behavior is the second function of emotion. For example, a baby looks at the fire. Now where did the fire came from? Let's just imagine there was a candle. The candle that was lit up. Baby wants to be a scientist and this starts experimenting with fire. He's a brave one and of course while doing so he hurts himself and gets his little finger burned. He then learns that fire is dangerous. He thus avoids fire as you know he might get himself hurt. And the third function of emotion is they help us in regulating social interaction. For example, you never mess up with an already messed up person because you know things will mess up worse. Jeez, I messed it up. Well, anyway, simply speaking, our behavior changes according to other person's mood or emotion. It also depends upon the situation. For example, we only go and ask our mom and dad something we want, like PlayStation 4 maybe, only when their mood is good and they look happy. So that's it for today. These were the three functions of emotions. And physiology of emotion is explained in the next part. See you soon. Thank you.